Oh yeah. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Dog Pound again tonight. Oh, man, we got an awesome show for you tonight. But before we get started, let me introduce our awesome panel in here. Our technician, Mr. Production Man, Mr. Do-It-All, Mr. Randy Cura. How you doing, sir? Good, brother. <laughs> and then our elder, the one, the only... Mr. Don R. right there in the corner. How you doing, Mr. Don? Uncle Don. I'm doing great tonight. And then we got Mr. Ernest E. Smith, River Rat 3030 out there, sporting the guard dogs, eating the chicken. How you doing, sir? <laughs> doing good, doing good. That's awesome. Then we've got somebody in here tonight, our guest, our man, man with needs no introduction, but we're going <laughs> to give it to him anyway. The mayor of you two, the <laughs> man that has won more medals than he has places to put them. The Sturgeon Killer. Two <laughs> is in the house. How you doing, Stan? I am doing great, Daryl. I'm doing great. My voice is a little recovered a little tonight, so we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, Stan said he felt like Santa Claus. He's been everywhere the last <laughs> few weeks. He said he's been on how many hours of, of Facebook have you been or YouTube have you been doing? Been learning the past couple weeks was like on live, like on camera, like 20 something, almost 30 hours. So. <laughs> yeah, man, I tell you what, I think I was on at least two thirds of that much. Uh, you Absolutely. might not know Stan and I, we did the. Uh, Something that was actually started right here by the Guard Dog Pro team. And, uh, man, I, kudos to all you guys that uh, came together and said, hey, let's help Big Mike. And uh, raised over $5,000, no, actually $5,300. And uh, Dan said, here, let me be your wingman here. And, uh, hey, he co-piloted that plane with me, and we rode that thing out and was able to have a great, awesome <laughs> deal, didn't we, Stan? That's right. All I did was all I did was talk though, Daryl. We already we already talked about that. I, that comes yeah. pretty easy. Well, that and uh, volunteer to wear the pants. So I don't. That's what. I, <laughs> well, all I know is come the thirtieth, we're in trouble, baby. Yeah. We, we have got some trouble. But before we get started, I want to thank Mr. Monty uh, that uh, sponsors us and sponsors this channel. Uh, guard dogs out there, guys. Uh, awesome, awesome product. I believe in it myself. I love looking for these guard dogs to go off. And guys, uh, if you want some of these guard dogs, you can go to guarddogproducts.com. You can put in TSO10 and get 10% off, or you can put in Randy, what's yours? Uh, Randy 10. Randy 10 or, or Don 10. Yeah, and uh, Ernest, I, I don't know if it's RR30 or what's yours, Randy? Or Ernest, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. He's too busy eating chicken. But anyway, uh -oh. Stan Three's in the house. Oh, Lord. Now, here we all got upstage now. We got uh -oh. to show off some of these guard dogs. Go out and grab you some. They are so much fun. And uh, for uh, Stan Two and Stan Three being on, we're going to mail them out some guard dogs and let them try them out. I think you'll really have a lot of fun. We're going to mail you out. <laughs> We're going to mail you out the Pro 1s, the Pro 2s, and the brackets that let you use them on your boat also, guys. So uh, Mine was mine was a dud. <laughs> it's, 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 they're a lot of fun to watch off. Uh, watch. They, got, uh, they come in certain colors? or Yep, different colors. Yes, sir. They sure do. I'll take a red one. Red one. All right. Well, I'm sure favorite. there'll be a red one in the pack. Oh, but anyway, okay. guys, another man that – we might need to give him a little introduction. The man that won the online fishing league uh, points Purple. champion. It takes a lot of credit for that. 
but you can see where the cup is right there. Mr. Stan three. I'm going to tell you what right now, but Mr. Stan, we're glad to have you on there. Stan three. And, uh, I don't think you've been on any shows yet since you won that big, beautiful cup, have you? Uh, no, this would be the this would be the first one. I did a little fishing in the morning with Bugman, but I haven't done like a interview style type yeah. of show. Well, that's awesome. We're glad to be. See, we were the first to be able to just snatch you right up there. So, <laughs> you know, I appreciate you thinking about me, Daryl. Yeah. Well, you know, after you gillnetted all of them and, and caught them out of your grandpa's <laughs> pond, I was like, well, let's get him around here and just see how he really caught those fish out there. So I'm so jealous. I tell everybody that he's my nemesis. Every time I think I've got something on, here he comes passing me up right in points. So. Well, I can tell you. I can tell you what happened. Oh, yeah. You told me at CatCon what tell happened. Him, tell him his skill. On that last, <laughs> on that last uh, deal there. So. That's what I wanted to do is bring in Stan 2 and Stan 3. And I wanted to talk to Stan 3. Uh, yeah, look there. Look at these medals they got showing up. I'm going to tell you what, amongst us all, uh, we got a lot of medals going on out there. That's a bling That's right. on screen now. Yes, bling, sir. bling. Yes, sir. Girl. Yeah. Recognize the people that come in. We got Dave from Double Hook Angling. We got Eddie Gross. We got H and H that uh, are hunting and stuff. Who thinks we look like the Brady Bunch? We got <laughs> Chomper in here. We got Mister Marty, and he's going to give send them the Pro Two models to fit perfectly on the FOA rods. Yes. We got Steve Hooker Thomas. We got Rhonda from Fishing and Whiskers. We got Whiskers. three from Cleveland. Cleveland. 351. Yeah. Uh, hunting and stuff. Eddie Goss. We got Pontoon Jody in here. Like I say we got Mr. Monty. We want to thank everybody, <laughs> everybody in here that's come in. Eric B., thank you. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate all of our people coming in. Hopefully, tonight will be entertaining and you'll enjoy what we talk about. Hey, I tell you, a lot of times we just get started and talk about what comes up most of the time. <laughs> That's the story from the Bullock experience. Yeah. Uh, we talk about anything and everything for sure. If we, if we missed anybody on chat, we'll try to get you caught back up. But yeah, uh, I want you to tell Stan 3, tell us about that last uh, a tournament where everybody was gunning to try to make sure they win it. It was like four of us that could have won it. And uh, some of us jumped in boats and drove for eight hours to try to guarantee ourselves a win. Now, that's just the way it was. We went, went all the way up to Illinois and fished this lake that was just supposed to be chock full of fish. And we were <laughs> making sure we were going to beat the James River. They wasn't no way Stan 3 was going to win this thing. And then tell everybody what happened and how, how you got where you was at. Well, I knew it was going to be a – a numbers type of tournament you know everybody's trying to get as many touchdowns as they can obviously so i had a pretty well a good game plan of where i was gonna go there was a there's a pretty big mud flat that i could have drug or sat around there and it's usually pretty active the bait's always there so when i went in and threw the cast net to try to catch some bait i caught like three or four of the catfish that we were going after the right size so i was like i know where i'm fishing now i ain't moving nowhere so I just found a spot I was able to anchor up, and it kind of made like a, I don't know how to, it came in and it was like, it like made like a bowl. So we have the tidal river. So when it was, when I was there, well, I guess it was high tide. So the whole first half of the, the tournament, I noticed that the current was kind of going out this way and all the hits was coming over there. So I started, you know, targeting all my baits over on that side. Then the tide flipped and the tide started coming back in and it did the opposite. Now it started looping around the other way and it, it was the same thing. I noticed all my hits were on that side. So then I, I targeted all my baits over there and I guess I guess it was just everything was in my favor that day. I got lucky and uh, did, did what I was supposed to do. I listened to the water and I was yeah. rewarded. So I yeah. don't know what else to say. 
it was a little bowl area, guys. That if you seen it on the, if you could have seen it on the live, it looked just <laughs> like a little pond that he had drug his his, his boat up in, and it, it couldn't even move it. So I, I claimed he was fishing in his grandpa's pond over <laughs> top full of channel catfish. And, it was a it was a hot water discharge. <laughs> yeah. I believe cool. the water temperature was in the it was like seventy five degrees that day when I was fishing it. And and they catch their bait with gill nets up there, and they, that's legal for them. So I always tell everybody he catches his catfish before tournaments with the gill nets, and then just hides them out on me. And then every time a tournament comes up, he's fish on, fish on, fish on, <laughs> just like that. So. Well, and that, we're allowed to use the reason we're allowed to use gill nets in the in the James River is because it's a tidal river, all the way up to above Richmond, so that they, they call it the fall line. Uh, so below the fall line is considered tidal river. So it's under the control of saltwater. Uh, what do they call it? The V Virginia Re Virginia Marine Resource Commission, I think, is uh, what controls it. So when you get your your gill net license, you got to buy a license for it. It's through the uh, saltwater. So that's the difference there. We, we can only use it there in that section of the James. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to, okay. Well, now that I know that you buy a license to do that, I'm going to uh, send into the committee and, and see if I can't get that stopped, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I need all the advantages I can get. I'm so tired of this. <laughs> I'm tired of this. That's for sure. Uh, that's sort of like it. Now here at Skip, uh, well, I live in Georgia, but up in Tennessee, you can only catch so many skipjack. Uh, you can catch a hundred, but you can only have two hundred in your possession. But I live in Georgia, so it's a sort of a gray area. In Georgia, you can keep as many, you can have as many in your possession as you want to. So I don't know if it's okay that I go if, I, and I had never done this, but if I could go up to Tennessee catch my hundred bring them back to georgia if i got the 400 in my freezer is that okay or not i don't know that's one of the gray <laughs> area things you know so i thought well i might need to give 50 dollars for a they sell a, a commercial license up there also for like 50 dollars or something like that but i don't you know, care get enough to do that you know it's usually better to pay the license fee than to worry the fine to get caught is usually worse than uh what it is just to get the the license absolutely but I know FOA is y'all sponsors, and uh, you appreciate them, and they take care. Of, Freddie takes care of you really nicely, and now Steve's brought you on as a, a monster rod holder uh, sponsor, and that's that's awesome. Congratulations with that. Thank you. Uh, it's just uh, opened up a lot of a lot of different things for you, and that's that's great. You know, uh, who would have thought fishing a little tournament that nobody actually started out that very often? And did so. Shout out to Freddie and happy birthday, bro. That's right. It's a uh, Freddie's birthday today. He's been sick. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday, Freddie. Hopefully next year you won't be quite as sick for sure. But he's been sick. There's Dustin. Hello, Dustin. Welcome to the dog pound. We appreciate you coming in. Look at look at understand making all that stuff, all that confetti going. Con con Canadian fishing machine, how you doing? Let's see who else we got in here. We got Avid in here. Avid, yeah. Hunting. White turkey Avid. just came out. Eric B. Man, we got the, the chats just rolling tonight. We appreciate everybody that's coming in. Wild turkey, how you doing? I'll we really appreciate. Uh, Canadian fishing musician came in. There you go. Yeah, he's asking if River had caught anything yet. I don't think he has. Uh, he just, I just, no, I just got down here. He just got uh, – well, he has caught something. I've seen him. He caught yeah. a fried chicken leg, and, and it's all in his beard right now, guys. So <laughs> don't let him you. He's eating a fried chicken leg for sure. So. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that, you know. I'm from the colonel. Yeah. That's <laughs> from the colonel. <laughs> <laughs> that – uh. That tournament started out, and you didn't have hardly anybody jumping into that tournament. And then all of a sudden, the tournament, the live fishing tournament league, and then it started catching on, and everybody wanted to be a part of it. And it, at the end, it was a battle, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Talk about pressure. They say there's no pressure in these tournaments. Bull crap. Yeah. It was pressure. <laughs> uh, I'll fish with James, and me and James were swapping the lead with Stan two and three 
back and forth right there at the end. And uh, we went in, me and James went in, what, we were 10 points ahead, I think, going into the last tournament. I think what went 10 in front of y'all. And then y'all wound up beating us by three, wasn't it? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was uh, whoever, basically whoever, it, uh, one of one of whoever won had to win if it was any of those four like had oh, yeah, to win. The top four, yeah. Uh, between us and you, like if you would have won, it was that, over. Like yeah. if that we point won, one, and, that yeah. point one, is yeah, really, what did it? That point, what was it? Point Shut one. Up, Dan, I'm tired of that. <laughs> well, I hate the word point well, one. Okay. <laughs> and here's the thing: there's there's so many things throughout the year. Uh, there was tournaments that some could fish in, some couldn't. Uh, there was uh you know, weather conditions, this, that. There were so many things throughout the whole season that uh, it just, you know, it wasn't one particular thing. And that's what's great about a year-long thing like that. Like, you've got to overcome everybody that's out there has to overcome so many different things. And to have it come down to the last week on the very first league, uh, <clears throat> to have it come down to the – it couldn't have been scripted any that's better. Happened. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Jay, how you doing out there? Josh Thompson's in the house. Hey, JG, how you doing, sir? Uh, I think we got everybody else. Hey, yeah. Hey, joined us, Josh Thomas. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing of it was, if it wasn't for that dead gum Brandon going down <laughs> there, getting that fishing guide down there in Louisiana, <laughs> man, a lie. I mean, yeah, they, they beat their buddy out by point one. What? Who does that to their friends? You know, I mean, that's just like if, I, if it hadn't been for that, we wouldn't have even had probably had to even fish uh, the tournament. Especially in different waters than your home yeah. water. That's just a double shot. That yeah, was... a secret weapon called Creole, did he? <laughs> Man, Creole got us. That's all I can say. It was the Creole death. I'm telling you, Creole, the secret weapon. It was. And I was, you know, I'm claiming that that was my win that day because it was my strategy to stay home out of the there boat. You, you know, oh. I was, I could, I wanted to go out there and, you know, take all the glory, but, you know, I decided, you know what, <laughs> my 400 pound butt don't need to be in the boat. Cause that's pretty much how he made it all the way out there. Cause that's a little, you know, you're talking for a small boat, like what we had in a small motor. Uh, and that's, that's actually down in the bigger water down yeah. where that spot that he went so it's a pretty good trip from the boat ramp out to that spot so um by me staying out of the boat it cut the travel time down by half <laughs> you told me you was not quite 400 pound you was a biscuit away from 400 pounds that's right that's right a biscuit away that's <laughs> right a biscuit away <laughs> I'll tell you what, he didn't help me. He really helped y'all because we would end up catching way more fish if he was in the boat. Because you both could have um, reeled him in, right? Well, exactly. Exactly. He could have been showing off the fish. I'd have been <laughs> casting them suckers right back out. I would have been up in the 30s or 40s, probably. I, I think that was a compliment because I don't know if he's saying that I'm one of my specialties is catching a lot of small fish. I don't know if that's what he's trying to say, but <laughs> hey, I, I, I've seen him catch one about that long just to get his stuff on the board one time with a night crawler. I'm not trying to say anything, but I've seen it. I was there when it happened. <laughs> he's good at targeting, right? He's yeah, good at targeting right. them fish. I'll put it this way. He's going to catch them just a little bit bigger than that if he's going to use a guard dog. <laughs> just a little bit bigger than that and use a guard dog. We just keep getting people coming in. We got uh, retired Rick. We got uh, What's up, Rick? James looking for stuff out of his cupboard that he can't find. We got <laughs> Stewart's in there. How you doing? Stewart's in here. <laughs> Woody's in here. What's up, Woody? What's up, Woody? <laughs> Apparently, why James was sleeping, Jody rearranged all his cupboards in the kitchen, so he can't find a dang thing now. <laughs> oh, man. We got yeah, Skip, man. Gray Wolf Outdoors. Welcome in. Hey, Gray Wolf. What's up, everybody? It's good to see everybody. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. We got an awesome crowd in here tonight. We appreciate everybody dropping in. Like I say, we're just sort of talking about the uh, online fishing turn. Oh, are, are you just going to keep that thing up on the mantle, or are you going to give us a big shot of that cut back there? Because I need to see what I'm going to win next year. Oh, yeah, I'll show you what you're going to win next year. 
Oh, oh come on. I hate him. I don't know why. I should have just let Stan <laughs> take him on. Darryl, you know how many people came up and said that to him at CatCon? <laughs> I had him in a I had him in a headlock over there. That is a beautiful trophy there, guys. And his name is actually on a trophy about three Absolutely. times. Guys. Look uh, at him. He done he done rubbed the buff off of it. <laughs> that's all right. He's the yeah. up there. You got look at you got fingerprints all over it. What are you doing kissing? Uh, what, you what are you doing kissing this thing? I, I, it was my trophy. It was oh my, my trophy. Oh my goodness. I was all ready to show it off here. Oh I was gonna goodness. come in with it and he come up and confiscated what? it before the show. I didn't even realize it. There's still there's cereal in here. What is I washed it out. I washed the cereal out of it. What do you got in here, man? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Everybody yeah, sees the serious side of fan three. He didn't confiscate my medals. Yeah. I still got my golden whisker medals from uh, this year's golden whisker. Wait a minute. It, it, is, is the granddaughter, is that your daughter that he got? Nominated and he kept he the, Those are my sons. Yep. That'd be his grandsons that got the medals and he kept them. Yep. Golden. I mean, wait a minute. It says Golden Whisker Awards Youth Angler nominees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where, where's your awards? That's what we're looking. Where is well, your awards? Well, man? as the you know, as the grandfather, the, the <laughs> patriarch of the family now. You get to, you know, claim responsibility. You, you know, you got to take the bad, but you got to take credit for the good, too. You know what I'm saying? So if they come from your loins, then <laughs> all, the, all the trophies are partially yours. Is that That's you know? right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. This It's getting worse by the minute, Stan 3. I'm telling you what, Pops, I don't know about that. Well, uh, I guess it's going to work out good for me in a couple of years, so. <laughs> I can't complain about it too much. That's right. Exactly. Oh, that's something else. But yeah, so this year, uh, it's going to be totally different. It's going to be a, a, a totally different fishing league. We're going to be fishing, I think it's 18. Is it 18 tournaments now? I think. Uh, nine, total, nine. Of 20, total of 20, but 19. I gotta go check. They must have added a couple that oh, I didn't. No, wait a minute. Maybe I am wrong. Eighteen, and then the the, the finale is the nineteenth tournament. Yeah, maybe so. But anyway, yeah. uh oh, what are you here? Curtis got something here. Mr. River, is that thing alive? Did you that find thing. that? You found, you found that, that on the shore. What you trying <laughs> to do to us? <laughs> well, That's uh, bait. Hey, it's officially a fishing show now. There was a fish showing on the show. That's right. That's what, alive, but... That's what I'm using for bait. That's a big there old bait. Yeah. Buddy of mine just come down here and caught him from in a net up the bridge up there about 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. Nice. Excuse my dog over here. If I get to laughing loud, she gets jealous and she barks at me. <laughs> <laughs> I so see mine, she too, finally made it back to shore. There was a long haul dragging that anchor all that way. Yeah. Hey, Jeff Bill's in the house. Crappy. Uh, 922 Crappy Barbecue. Hey, how you doing? What's up, 922? Uh, Jody said it's going to be a year of the ladies winning this year. Well, let's see about all that. We'll have to see. I don't remember if we said hello to River Rat uh, there. Or River, excuse me, Rebel River Cats. I'll get that in right in a minute. But <laughs> it's, it's tough having to read, man. <laughs> Looks like Jeff was asking if Ernest is blowing bubbles. Uh, I don't know. He may be over there, but uh, yeah, uh, this year there's going to be even more skin in in there in it. But I don't. I think everybody would have fished it whether there was money on the line or just for that cup. I'm telling you, it, it, it's just fun to get out there and compete and have a good time with your fellow fishermen. And uh, you know, I know we've got a two thousand dollar payoff for the biggest catfish, uh, and that's by uh, Mad Cat's Rod and uh rods and then we also if you're using monster rod holders that's going to be 200 dollars per tournament for anybody that wins that if they're if they got monster road uh, rod holders then also we've got uh at the end of the year the points champions uh first second and third there'll be money there so uh, it's an extra incentive but like i said i don't think that's uh that would in, influence anybody to get more to get in it i think it's 
it might cause a little more controversy just to be honest with you but that's okay there's always controversy whether there's money involved or not when you got a contest what do you guys think <laughs> about that absolutely you just need some uh, bragging rights, and there's going to be controversy. Oh, absolutely! I mean, it's throw, like a, throw a line of uh, spool of line in there. There's going to be a, throw a sticker in there. You're going to have controversy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah. and uh, Daryl, I think that's what started kind of the whole thing. Just with, uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how uh, important this stuff is to us. They think it. They, you know, a lot of people outside of the community just thought of it as all the fun little tournaments, but they didn't realize how how much care, how much time we put into our channels, how much time and effort, you know, yeah. to go out and fish these uh, tournaments. You know, the first Iron Cat, we were out there for two straight days with no sleep, uh, 43 straight hours of fishing with no no rest, no break, no nap, no nothing out in the, and it was thundering, uh, had mud up to my knees and, uh, you know, stand three and Dan, we're floating down the rivers in kayaks for over the overnight and part of the next day. So uh, when the rest, the rest of the world didn't realize how we, how much we cared about these tournaments and it wasn't for money. It was to go out there and say, look, I I'm fishing these waters. I believe in these waters. I believe in myself. And I, I, you have fun in that too, but you know, uh, uh, you were representing your rivers, you were separate, representing your home waters, your channel and the catfish community as a whole. So, absolutely uh, i think people are starting to realize that now yeah and, and i'll just be honest with you when we left from the tennessee river to go up to illinois fish uh you can ask uh woody i was like we were going by the river and i said man i feel like i'm cheating on my river we were because we had to go by the river to go up to the where we're going at, and i looked at him i said man i don't like this i said i feel like we're cheating on my river <laughs> you did you did <laughs> cheat on your river I did, they did. Say, they say, fears well, never I'm, prosper <laughs> I, 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 see that's what I, said. I said, man, I feel like we're cheating on the river going here. Well, he goes, I know what you're talking about, but you know, well, Daryl, I just want to point something out. You hear the two, you hear the two different responses there, and that's why I'm called the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't listen to him. He's like me, he's got that little smart mouth on him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, wouldn't you rather wouldn't you rather be a, a smart butt than a dumb butt? There you go, all day long. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, it is fun, I, and uh, and I, I get why we were doing it and stuff like that. I mean, we're just not known for the small uh, fish, but uh, you know, it is what it is. We had all year to we should have built a lead where we didn't have to worry about that. So it's just like a football game, you know. If uh, that people go, oh, they lost calls. The referee made one bad call. You had a whole game that he didn't make a bad call. On. You should have put it away during then. That's what we always said. So. Hey, they you know, can't complain about is. that. They can't yeah. complain about that. They were the refs. That's right. <laughs> so, hey, welcome in to sure. Jeff Bill, Don Johnson. Yeah. Thomas, uh, Josh said he feels like cheating when I fish without Shelby. Oh, Shelby caught a nice fish this weekend, 30 something pound blue cat this weekend. Congratulations mm -hmm. on that. They were using the uh the guard dogs he sent me a good picture of the guard dogs uh, they had out there so and he yeah. was used in watermelon uh watermelon kool-aid with major major melon mountain dew skipjack heads guys if y'all want some some flavored skipjack or flavored uh <laughs> chad and you live close to watts bar now, I'm going to tell you what, this man believes in his flavoring of the bait. And it's funny, that's what he catches on every time. He does Kool-Aid and Mountain Dew, and I don't know what all. I think he went out there and got some dirt one day. Oh, no, coffee. That's what it was. Kahlua he, coffee. Kahlua <laughs> coffee and caught, caught him on it. I'm like, this guy's crazy, but he does. He catches them, so that's, you know, go ahead. Where is he located at, Stan, too? Three miles east of Watts Bar Dam is Thompson's yeah. Outdoors and more there for you all your it. bait and tackle needs and yeah. more. Yeah, and uh, we got to get him started on. Uh, he's he's using the guard dogs and he's wanting to get those in his store. Uh, a lot of people don't know Josh. He's just started that store out and he's trying to slowly build up as he goes. So he'll be getting more and more stuff in that store. Good guy. Uh, I helped him out by pouring the concrete. Helped him with the. Well, he did all the heavy work. I just showed him how it was done. 
but poured the concrete slab for his uh, bathroom. They're about to start serving uh, biscuits in the morning and stuff. So, man, that's that's an awful nice place to go over there. But anyway, we'll get back to what's at hand. But it's going to be a great uh, tournament this year, and a lot of great teams are going to be in. And, uh, I don't plan on, unless something big changes, planning on fishing outside my waters to go anywhere. I'm going to, I'm going to try to beat you stand two and stand three like a wet noodle. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're the the you can say that right now, but hey, when time comes, <laughs> my time comes. Uh, just like uh, this weekend. This weekend, what's going on this weekend, Stan? Too, I can't hardly remember what's coming up Saturday at eight a.m. in the morning. Do you do you know uh, Stan Three? Do you do you remember? We are about to finally see who is the better anglers, the boat anglers or the bank anglers. And I think it's pretty cool. That it's it's kind of like the the jump off before the league starts up, and everybody's going to be basically on the same team. And then they're all about to be against each other. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's going to be a good showing, a good showing of great fishing. Tried so, to pick a little bit of everybody across the country. So, who did you leave off your team, Stan Three? Uh, you have to catch fish, Daryl. So, who did, you, who did you leave off your team, Stan? I picked good fishermen. That's what happened. So I made sure I got Brandon, and you know, I picked all them other good Tennessee anglers. Yeah. He left me off his team. Mm -hmm. Sure did, man. man. He's left me off my team off the team. He's like, yep, there was not good enough to be the boat team. So then what oh, happened? Oh, still yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> as always, your nemesis will be <laughs> fishing on the bank, brother, making you look bad like only I can do. <laughs> That's right. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. this Saturday, O'Dell Maurice will be fishing from the bank. Oh, putting and, on the bank. Uh, yeah, we'll leave a couple the of <laughs> out there for him. <laughs> it's gonna be a massacre. And you know what? All you know, the only person I want to be in this whole tournament is you, brother. You. <laughs> it seems like everybody wants to do that lately. Everybody's coming after me lately. What's up with that? Because we got a couple of haters out there that don't like you winning. That's what a couple of haters. <laughs> is, hey, if I got some haters, I'm doing something right. There you go. Exactly. So and Cool Cat said funny, he did not pick me either. Oh. And he came in second I, right behind him. I know you're gonna be fishing with Jody. I know Brandon's gonna be fishing with Bobcat. Yeah. I plan. I planned that out smart. I'm not. I'm not no dummy. He's a smart fart smeller. Mm -hmm. Dumb feller. <laughs> so that's going to be a fun time. I, man, I, nobody's ever seen me fish from the bank. And the rules are, you got to fish from the bank, and you can. Uh, what is it? We uh, uh, six rods. Is that the rule? Six rods. I didn't. I don't care. Use me. Okay, if, right. if somebody, if somebody's got a limit in their state or whatever, we can do six. But I don't care. Use me as one. Many as we want. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you asking for trouble now, my brother? As uh, many as we want. Okay, I got a half mile. Uh, Josh, yes, when, uh, when you succeed, you always got a target on your back. Yeah. Yeah, so he goes out and he gets all these suckers to come in. Hello, Eric B. How you doing out there? There's, uh, I think we already said hello to re retired Rick. Hey, uh, butterfly. Sunshine in the house. But that's okay because, you know, when, when you leave somebody off your list, it just makes them just want to win that much harder. I went out and got me some cat claw rod holders. I painted those suckers up, got them all shiny, walked up. I got me some monster <laughs> rod holders that I'm going to be using also. I got those things all shinied up, welded me up this nice bracket. But now that I know I can use more than six rods, that monster rod holder bracket's going to get just that much bigger. <laughs> we don't need to get you it's going to be a massacre. Daryl. Yeah. There ain't no honor in that, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, go, I go out there with one rod. You go out there with 20 rods. Come on now. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Oh, you are you going back to your grandpa's pond again? Is that where you're going back? <laughs> hey, it's it's the James River. <laughs> I'm in a boat. I got there in a boat, well, right? I don't know. I didn't see you getting there in a boat. Now we're gonna we got to tell the truth. <laughs> and for those that haven't that don't know about it yet, it's pretty simple. Bank anglers got a fish on the bank. Boat anglers got a fish from the boat. Uh, you can use whatever bait. So you could use the Kahlua, Kahlua uh, Kool Aid chicken flavored whatever you want to use uh and the the way that it's determined is the single biggest fish the bank anglers are fishing as a team the boat anglers are fishing as a team you know we see a lot of times everybody fishing against each other we tried to have it uh this one it's a team the bank the bank team is on our channel two stands fishing boat team is going to be fishing on jg hill's uh channel and uh so it's the single biggest fish, one fish from each team, the biggest one. Whoever gets that gets a point. Then it's the single biggest fish from each angler on that team added together. And that's the second point. And the third point, because, you know, the bank anglers, we wanted to try to give those poor boat anglers a chance. We said, all right, well, maybe they can go to a bunch of different spots. They might be able to catch a lot of fish. So we don't totally want to blow them out. We're going to let the bank anglers... Uh, catch more fish. So wh whichever team catches the most fish, that's the third point. And so to win, one of the teams has to get at least two out of the three points. So tried go. to keep it fair. Well, we didn't want to destroy them too bad, you know. So Yeah, I let them have one point. And get to our spots any way we can, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He uh, take... got lucky last night on uh, our – Guard Dog Pro Staff member Rustic Outdoors, he won a hundred dollar gift card, so he got to go window shopping at Bass Pro Shops. Oh, awesome. so what'd you get me? <laughs> Skip got it. And, and can we agree that's all the rules exactly? Is that all the rules there are? Stand what, what kind of slick stuff are you trying to put? I'm just that's a that's a Georgia <laughs> thing right there. I'm just oh my look, I'm, look, it was asking what were the rules, and I just want to know if that's all the rules. I'm the, just, I know that I know that the boat anglers are nice, honest. Professional fishermen are just gonna go out and just fish like normal. Not gonna have a whole bag of clown tricks that they're pulling out there. Oh, yo, yo! I gotta worry about writing a whole rule book for uh -huh. a little bank fishing. Good evening, Ernie Brown. <laughs> I, I, I'm not very good at casting, but I'm. You good can do at that. That's that's I'm that's fine. <laughs> that's totally fine. I'm good. Have y'all ever seen a drone pick up a, a pick up a, a, a line and take it out to the middle of the river and drop it? And uh, all I, and we had to agree upon that all final decisions will be based on agreement by JG and myself. Okay, the most weight. Okay, each individual is going to catch the biggest fish they can catch. All right. So at the end. We'll take those biggest fish, say I catch a 22-pounder and uh, Danny Stone catches a 56-pounder and so-and-so-and-so-and-so. And so and so and so. Every one of the bank fishermen, their biggest fish, they'll add those together for the most weight and the same thing with the boat. That's what I understand, right? Yep. yep. And if, We're just going to uh, count the biggest fish. You know, if yeah. there's six boat anglers and seven bank anglers, it would be the six. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to match out. It's got to be the, you know, it's got to be even amounts. And uh, oh, the boat anglers away, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, I mean, you know, it is. It is. So, guys, y'all go out and watch that. It's going to be a great fun and a great time. And uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's fun. But let me ask you this, uh, Stan, too. How did you get started? Just pretty much strictly in the catfishing part. I mean, you're probably like us. We, me, I grew up fishing from the bank and catching bluegill and bass yeah. fish and all that. But what made you turn over to where you just pretty much just catfished? Uh, Mike Chavez in the James River. <laughs> you know, we, uh, my father, my family's from Louisiana, so, but we lived in upstate New York when I was younger. And, I couldn't uh, we're pretty, Yeah. <laughs> we pretty much had uh we pretty much had uh, 
bull bullheads up there and small channel cats but uh so i actually you know we'd run a trot line and stuff up there and every once in a while and uh for some uh and keep what we caught and you know we'd clean them up and eat them but as far as like the, the catfishing that we do now i would say what do you think son it was when we came down probably 2000 well the first time we went out we thought we were the stuff down here we we had uh what did we get the trifecta and i don't think any one of them was bigger than 10 pounds oh yeah we, we were bragging we were bragging every one of them was over five pounds yeah <laughs> i thought, I, we were I, thought using, I was doing something we were still using like we were fishing for bullheads you know night crawlers and like 12 pound test and uh you know light gear and so we I, thought and then you know after that we started hearing other things and I, we kind of started watching uh, Mike Chavez on YouTube and he fishes the James river and the, uh, the chick chick And, uh, we're like, man, look at this. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> got nothing going on, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So kind of went from there and then stand three was, uh, uh, so we were doing okay. We were catching the first big fish that we caught. First big catfish was 22 pounds. I know you're not going to believe it, but, it was before we started YouTube. It was a 22 pound catfish, a blue, and that was kind of it. And then uh, Stan Three got the Walmart. He had the Walmart kayak out there, and he would go to places that we couldn't get uh, from the bank. And there was nights where he was send calling and sending me pictures and videos of like uh, three, four, five, sixty pounders, you know. And uh, every night, like, because uh, he was able to get up in the, you know, with that kayak and. It wasn't the kayaks you see now, the new canoes and that. It was the Sun Dolphin, little plastic, 10-foot Walmart uh, kayak. And Tumbleway then he started, he started doing that. Then we started doing more bank fishing, and it just kind of went from there. Yeah. What do you think, son? Yeah, I think uh, probably the biggest thing that, like, really changed for us was once we were watching the stuff, we were, we were still fishing like we were in New York. Like even when we caught that uh the twenty pounder or whatever, we still had the smaller hooks and stuff like that. I think we maybe used a six aught. Thought we were using a big hook. Yeah, we I, probably, that was I think we were using eel, so we were using smaller pieces of bait, and we just weren't fishing. Like that was big baits for like back where we were, but that was that's not big baits for the James. Right. So then we started realizing all right you got to be using pieces of bait the size of your hand not the size of your finger yeah and then that's when everything started cutting the baits a little bit different and i started noticing some some changes and improvements there and that was that was the biggest thing I, for some reason i don't know why there's that snowball effect you'll catch you can't catch a certain size fish and then you'll catch once you catch one you start catching a bunch of them yeah. but it happened when i was cutting my bait a certain way I started cutting them into big chunks, and then I would notice that I was like, oh, wow, all these are like over 10 pounds, whatever. Then I was cutting it like a, like a flapper bait, like down the in the middle, so it had, you know, both sides kind of flapping, and then it went up to like 20 pounders. And then I did it like a four-way flapper, and then they went up more. But I haven't really been doing it anymore, but uh, it was pretty weird how once I did those extra little bits of cuts that yeah. – just the presentation, changing up your presentation and stuff. Yeah. Makes a difference. It, and it's just amazing how you can get hooked on it. With me, I was the same way. I had never caught big fish until uh, I started watching chat cats and, uh, uh, you know, kayak catfish and those guys up in the Tennessee because uh, I'd heard a lot about how big the catfish were up there. And, man, I started looking at how they did it and watching closely and the stuff they used. and. And then I took and went up there. I remember the first time I went to Tennessee, me and my buddy went up there and it was still dark. And I looked at that river and around my house. We didn't have a river that nowhere near that side. I thought, oh my God, it's dark. I ain't going out there in the dark. I ain't never been there. I don't know where the rocks are. Because see, our rivers down here, you know, you got to watch how you go. But up there, it didn't matter if there wasn't no rocks. But I didn't know no better than that. So I waited until it got daylight. We sat there for 45 minutes till it got daylight and got out there. And, uh, and man, once we started catching fish and they kept like you, they kept getting bigger. And it's just like, I didn't want fish for nothing else. <laughs> Monster catfish. It was just awesome. So 
It's it's, yeah, it's a good uh, thing. Pro staff in here, or, uh, catfish and Katie Collins. Be hey. sure to check out her par promo code and save yourself some money. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know what got me. I think I think it's kind of funny. We've caught a lot. Well, some of us have caught a lot of big fish. <laughs> You know, I mean, a lot. I can't really remember exactly every detail on all on the 50s and whatevers, but for some reason, we can remember every detail of that 122 pounder. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's crazy. However many years ago, that 122 pounder, I remember all the details on that night. It was, yeah. and I think that's what got me is because I had to go, I had to go get my daughters or drop my daughters off. And when I left, we were already saying, like, as soon as we leave, he's going to end up catching something. He's going to end up catching something big. As soon as we were leaving, driving over the bridge, he's underneath us, hooked up. We come back. He's got this big fish on the bank. I was like, How? I'm, I'm beating him now. I got to get one bigger <laughs> than that. And that's what, I think that's what lit that fire right there. <laughs> we're like, okay, so they're out here. They're definitely here. I got to figure it out now. Yeah. It was funny. What, my biggest catfish I'd ever caught was 18 pounds in Georgia. And the second time I went to Tennessee, we tied that. And I won't never forget that either. It's funny that the, 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 the beginning details are more etched in your mind than, yeah. than the others. But then the second time we went up there, I took my son with me, and we both caught a 22-pounder together. I know Stan's going to go two two. It's a perfect I, fish. Yeah, it was a 22-pounder. <laughs> and then then – but uh we fished all day and but just by the time we were going to leave he caught a 24 pounder and beat me like that and uh, but it was just so crazy you know and you learn from youtube and learning from watching shows like this and you know that's what i'd say to people if uh if you're thinking about going somewhere where there's big fish find somebody that's fishing in that area uh, that you're going to go to a youtube channel you know and watch the, how they do it. You can learn a lot off of these people that's fishing off of YouTube by watching their shows. And that was what got, I didn't know. I had no idea what kind of uh, hooks to use or line or sinkers or any of that stuff. And uh, I watched Chat Cats because I knew I was going to be fishing in Chattanooga because that was the closest place to Tennessee River me. And I watched closely and watched everything he did and how he did it. And uh, Actually, when I got up there, I had watched so many of his shows and I didn't even realize it, but I started to figure out where all he had been fishing. And I would go, <laughs> now this is funny, I would go over to his spots and look at what, what he was fishing in. And then I wouldn't fish that far. I would mimic it. I'd go find something down river to try to find. And I, I, I me and his friends now, and I told him about it. I said, I didn't want to fish your spots because then I was just learning from you and fishing your spots. I went and found spots down river that mimic it to where I could figure out what it was. And then, then I learned about, you know, and boy, then I learned about how they moved around and all that. But that's what I did to start off with was try to mimic and find a spot on my graph, like what he fished. And uh, I learned and a lot like that. I think, uh, I think Randy will agree. And, uh, Don and Ernest, it doesn't matter what fish you're going for. If it's a predator fish, uh, you know, trout or pike or uh, whatever, there's going to be certain characteristics and they're going to act, that species is going to act the same, you know, for the most part, for the conditions that are there that day. So if there's bass up in the shallows at a certain water temperature hitting frogs in the lily pads, well, guess what? The majority of bass in that lake are going to be up in the shallows on in the lily pads hitting frogs uh if you know the pike are somewhere and they're they're deep it's a little cooler and they're hitting a certain thing or a certain colors work if the majority not all of them there's always going to be the anomalies but uh predator is a predator and they in, they are instinctual so they're going to act the same they're going to react for the most part going to react the same to the conditions that you're in so just like you were saying if you're finding shallow mud flats or if they're on a ledge or you got deep and shallow then deep uh look for those and you're going to be more productive that's how you're going to continue to catch more uh is just knowing how to put those patterns together and i think i think randy or anybody would agree with that yeah. no, i agree and i think a lot of the times is uh, people don't think about just take a little notebook with you and you want to write down conditions temperature 
um, you know, what fronts moving in and out, because that's going to pay off later. Kind of hard to keep track of everything, but if you take a little notebook with you and just write it down, that's what I like to do. Yeah. And if I think if uh, people are getting into this, getting into fish, catfishing, and you want to really start uh, understanding a catfish more, you need to understand the bait. Yeah. Look at whatever body water you're in and look, understand that bait. Because if they're the catfish are on the mud flat, they're on the mud flat for the bait. If the bass, like he was talking about, is up on hitting the frogs, they're getting the bait. It's all about the bait. You want to get consistent and learn about the catfish, learn about the bait. Yeah. It's all about that bait. About that bait. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stick to your day job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, already was talking about writing things down and i'll tell you there's a and i don't have it here uh there's a good book that catfish sumo puts out there that's yep. a log book and guys yep. if you want a very very detailed log book that has everything in there if you're fishing that day especially people that start now uh it'll it's got a place to, for the weather what the uh you know how high the water was, how cold the water was, the flow. It get, it's it got a place for everything for that day. And, and that's awesome. I got to give uh, Stan 3 credit with that. Like, that's uh, – uh, he's very, very good at looking at the river, putting the conditions together and saying, okay, uh, you know, I'll just use basic things like the current is up, the, the water's up, the current's here, so – Okay, I got spots. Boom, boom, boom. This section of the river I know to go to. If it's uh, sunny and this and that, okay, it's these are the conditions I'm going to fish here, here, and here. So he knows. That's why you see him consistently catching. It's not that he's that much better at fishing than everybody else, and he's not. He just has learned, uh, like Randy was saying, about those conditions. And that's what we talk about time on the water. He was able to pick that up and... Uh, remember those spots put those conditions together and that's you know with talking with epic that's one of the things that, that we have learned with from him and uh he's one of the best at doing that really quickly so he's always fishing what's going to be the most productive spots for the conditions that he's in he's not wasting time fishing spots that uh you know you caught a fish there three weeks ago but it was sunny and it was a warm front. Well, now it's a cold front, and it's it's cold and the cloudy. He's not going to fish that same spot. He'll be fishing a different spot. So that's that's the time on the water that you talk about, and that's why you see him consistently. And any of the other ones, you see consistently catching fish, Parker and everybody else. That's what they're doing. They're able to put the patterns together quicker than most other people. That's why yeah, that was the problem. And that time I took that big old weight off of there and I was, that was the problem today. It was, uh, obviously, everybody had tough conditions on stand day, but we had the shad run right now, and it's normally, like, you go up you go up where the shad are at. That's where you go fishing. But you have them with the spring conditions where the water temperatures should be up in the mid to high 50s, and, you know, you want nice, bright, sunny conditions and stuff like that. Well, it was below 30 degrees last night so we had an immediate cold front so i knew i couldn't decide whether i should listen to the cold and probably maybe they might be holding a little deeper try to go for a big one and then the technique i was using the wind was blowing directly up river so i wasn't going to be able to do my drifting down river so i was like well i can't fish like that might as well go see if some big ones is in the deep and uh they were biting before the camera. I had the camera curse today. I had to I had to pull out the Jody technique. I finally I took a nap and when I woke up I had to take now rods folded over with <laughs> a 30 pounder on there. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's the way I, I see Stan too told me one time uh that uh if you didn't catch fish on live, they didn't count. He hurt my feelings bad that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough when you are doing lives. It, it seems like every time you turn that live off, when you catch the big fish, uh, we were doing a live the day that Woody caught the hondo, and we kept having problems of we'd get into a place we'd have signal, and then we went in a place we wouldn't have it, and we lost signal twice. I'm like, ah, let's just end this live. 
we ended the live like an hour later. We moved back down to where we actually would have had signal if we wanted to do live, and we caught the hundred pounder, and it wasn't on the live. It would have been great if it would have been, but it was. Well, we had it on video at least, but it, yeah, it's it's always seems like when you catch the big ones, it's not on the live. So it's crazy. Or the, or the reception's all messed up and it gets all pixelated. That's what yes. happens to us. Anytime we've had a big fish on, all of a sudden the camera goes to crap. It's pixelated. <laughs> can't you never can look at it again. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, that's my fault that that happens. You know, that's uh, you're, you're supposed to be boat. doing the YouTube part of it. I'm doing the fishing part of it. <laughs> you know, one thing I tell people who are just starting <laughs> out, and I hope it stays in the back of their mind is that there is no wrong way to fish. You know, if something's not working, try something else. The yeah. fish are there. They're going to bite eventually, but, you know, just keep chunking away at it. But you might be doing totally unorthodox thing and catch the biggest fish that day. And I I've seen it happen many times. One Absolutely, Don. Great advice. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's how sure. you learn new things. Sometimes you got to try something different. Might Isn't that how... Uh, isn't that how the Santi the drifting rig was came up with? They tried something different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody else was doing that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't ever get discouraged. I don't let anybody discourage me if I'm going to try a different way. You know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch and learn and stuff. But if I get, I mean, the most of the big fish that we've ever caught, I had a. Uh, I was like. I can't say it's an intervention, but you know, it, it was a gut feeling. It's like we got to stop and fish here. We got to try it right here. You know, mm -hmm. it pays off. Yeah, it don't always pay <laughs> off, but it has a lot. You know, just mm -hmm. going with your gut. I mean, you know what? Start consistently catching fish, then you start putting the other pieces in the puzzle together to, you know, increase your odds. But I, I try to make sure they don't get discouraged right out of the get-go because they're not doing what somebody else with 30 years' experience is doing. Yeah, Absolutely, that, Don. That's why we did the show last week, that you don't have to have, you know, $200 rod and reels and stuff like that. You know, we did the show last week, uh, Fishing on the Cheap, where, you know, you, can, you don't have to have the high-dollar uh, – you know, uh, demon dragons or whatever. You can use the floats and stuff. Use what you got and, you know, and fish for what's in your area to you. You know, a 10 pound catfish may be a, a huge fish in there. And that's one thing I said about when I made trophy seekers outdoors. A trophy is what's in the, the eye of the beholder. You know, if a, if a 10 pound catfish, if that's a trophy to you, awesome. Thank you. Great that's job right. for you, you know. And, uh, don't let somebody's hundred pound fish discourage you going, well, I'll just never do anything. Like you may not be in the waters to be able to do that. So whatever's a trophy to you, that's a trophy. And don't let anybody ever discourage you that you did, you know, that you get, that you don't have your trophy. That's what the trophy is to you. It has nothing to do with the size of the fish. It's the size of the excitement that that fish brings you. And yep. uh, like you said this morning, <laughs> And you know, if it's like Daryl was saying, if ten if ten pound channel cats are the biggest uh, fish that are in those waters, and you're catching eight pounders, well, guess what? That's the same thing as somebody in the James catching an eighty pound fish, or in the Tennessee, uh, you know, whatever the big fish are in, in your areas. Like you know, well, that's one of the things. That's why we kind of started for big catfish here because we're on the James. Well, what's a half big catfish? When we were up in New York, we lived right on a lake. We would catch the uh, biggest bass we caught was over nine pounds. We've caught crappie. My wife has caught over three pound crappie. We've caught over two pound crappie. It used to be nothing to go out and we'd catch a stringer full of 16, 17, 18 inch hey, crappie. How, how big of a walleye did you catch? I had big of a line you catch. You know, I was, I was mean to ask you, uh, Miss Smitty's flathead is. Does she have one bigger than you? I can't remember. Oh, 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 oh. You know my buddy in there. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hers, her cat, her flathead is bigger than mine. 
by by quite a bit. I think my biggest flathead is twenty two pounds. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm just the one taking it. I mean, you had to take it tonight, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and she was out fishing. She was out fishing with uh with my son with Stanley there when she did it. Yeah. I think I caught like a twenty two pounder the other morning with Bugman. Yeah. Well, guys, we are bound to the end, and I'm just going to give you a chance to, if you had any last things to say, uh, talk about, or your sponsors, or anything like that, before we get out of here. We appreciate both of you coming on. Yeah, appreciate thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, Ernest back there, he didn't get one, but hey, he will before it's over with, I'm sure. Mr. Don R., thank you for coming in and helping with chat. That helps so much. I appreciate you, brother, as always. But if you guys, I've I, got one more question. Yes, sir. All right, so you've seen what it's like when me and him are on the boat. You see how much he rocks the boat. You sure those things aren't going to go off with uh, every time he laughs and the poles go like well, that? They, when you get them, and we'll talk about them, they have a light and a heavy setting. Okay, so when there's a light guy in the boat, that's when you put on light. Well, and there's a big, you know, a cat head away from 400 pounds, that's when you put it over in heavy for the heavy weight. So light oh, okay. in a stand two setting. This far one over here, that's the stand thing. Uh, and, 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 and you know what? These things are so much fun to sit and watch and, and anticipate them going off. And you, the coolest thing, you hear the <laughs> it, It's so cool. You got to try with that for sure. I got to experience that at CatCon where they had that set up. Yeah. And by the way, thank you very much for that. But uh, at CatCon where they had them set up where you could actually, they had a little handle on it. Yeah. You could you could set it off and you felt it. It wasn't uh you know where we you say don't with a circle hook, don't like you don't want to do that. It's just gonna pull it straight out of the mouth. But it was like a it was like a, the same thing as we reel down fast on it, or if you just do that, yeah. you know, that slow hook set, it just bam, and you could feel how it would pull right on it like that. So it was yeah. uh it was pretty cool actually getting to try it out at CatCon. Yeah, I've been using nice. them a couple months now and I've enjoyed it. Like I said, the anticipation. Ooh. I watch my rods way more now than I did before I got them. They're made for you. If you don't watch your rods, if you're looking at your phone or whatever, but I guess they just make, I just want to see them go flying through there. That's the fun part. <laughs> and uh, that is stink was, sound. Yeah. Any final Stop. words, Mr. Stan T? Any, anything from you, son? Well, of course, you know, I got to have a couple things. FOA, <laughs> FOA, customs and gear.com. Uh, we got monster rod holders. Uh, so proud to be part of that. If you're going to get some monster rod holders, you can use code two stands 15. We're getting that all worked out. Steve has been traveling and stuff. Uh, Jay, Colorado Jay, you can get in touch with Daryl or you can email me two stands fishing at gmail.com. She said she was waiting on the, uh, hasn't heard back about the, uh, the Creole package yet. Um, okay. Never lost anchors. Use code two stands fishing. Uh, you know, when you try to do this off the top of your head, you always forget somebody. But uh, <laughs> CatCon, if you're getting your tickets for CatCon, you can use code 2STANDS10 to nice. save yourself some money. Or just 2STANDS at, uh, at catfishconference.com for your catfish tickets. Cow Cow Boots. Uh, man. Just I'm sorry. I just couldn't put up with enough. I had to mute it, guys. <laughs> I had to mute it. That's just messed up, man. <laughs> Stand three. Did I do a good job? Hey, y'all can just check the description in our latest video for all of our sponsors and links. <laughs> that is so messed up. And, you know, I it's really funny. appreciate being here tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you for letting me talk, Daryl, and getting all that final things off my chest. Uh, you know, I really gave out the secret to catching big fish there in that last couple of seconds. So I hope everybody heard. All right. That's enough, guys. We appreciate everything. <laughs> but, you know, this is not the stand show. This is guard dogs. Guys, I hope you get out and get you some guard dogs. Get them on your rides. Get them on your boats. Awesome, awesome product. Guarddogproducts.com. Go over there. Uh, you can hit the SOTN. Randy TN, Don TN, uh, Ernest, what did you wind up saying yours is? River Rat 10. River Rat 10. River Rat 10. Easy we appreciate enough. everybody coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stan 2, Stan 3. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks, guys. So, uh, There's you know, a trophy. So, uh, <laughs> as I always say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll get with you on your address, sir, Stan 2 and 3. Randy, take us out of here before he starts talking again.
Yes, sir. <laughs> One more. Th- <laughs> <laughs>